we're here today with our April wrap-up. We've got some really awesome books this month and we're excited to share them with you. So without further ado, away we go! So the first book I'm going to talk about is Fifteen Dogs by Andre Alexis. This book follows the consequences after Hermes and Apollo make a bet that if you granted animals human consciousness and language, they would be even more unhappy than human beings. They grant a group of 15 dogs in a Toronto animal shelter this ability, and then we see the story take off from there. This is a short book that's really engrossing and has beautiful writing. It's also Canadian literature, which I don't get to read a lot of, so it was really a treat. So I technically read this book on the very last day of March, but I absolutely had to include it because it's probably my favorite book I've read this year and that is When Dimple Met Rishi by Sonia Menon. I read this book when I was sick at home and I read it in one sitting and it was just absolutely glorious. This is an own voices novel about two Indian American teens named Dimple and Rishi. Dimple is a girl who's obsessed with web development and coding and she wants nothing more than to attend a summer program where she'll be able to use these skills and if she wins the program she gets to be mentored by one of her heroes. Her parents have other ideas for her though, they're much more traditional and all they really want is to see her matched up with a wonderful Indian husband. And Rishi is a hopeless romantic who loves traditions of his culture and is excited to meet his wife that he's going to be arranged to. Um, their parents are friends and unbeknownst to Dimple, they decide that the summer program would be a great place to have them meet for the first time. I fell in love with this book so hard and I adore both Dimple and Rishi equally and I think they're both amazing characters. Um, it's been a while since I've connected to a book this much and I just can't wait for it to be out in the world. It comes out at the end of May and I highly highly encourage everyone to pick it up. I can't wait to see what this author does in the future as well. The first book on my list this month is Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon. Uh, I read this one at Karina's insistence because the movie is coming out in May and I had never read any of Nicola Yoon's books before, so this was forced upon me and I'm very grateful for it. So Everything Everything is told through the eyes of Maddie, who is an 18-year-old girl who's lived her entire life sealed inside a house with her mother and her nurse because she has an immune disease. Her world is very insular and she uses books as a way to escape and experience the world. So up until um, the point that we meet Maddie, uh, her books and her mother and the life that she's been living has been enough because it's all that she's known and that has been enough. That is until Ollie moves in next door and suddenly there is uh, a reason to experience more of the outside world and all the heartache and excitement that comes with that. I haven't actually read all that much YA in the past, but I devoured this book in about two days. I couldn't put it down. Um, I really loved Nicola Yoon's writing style and the devices that she used, like um, how she'll have an entire chapter be a sentence or two. Uh, I thought it was a really great way to uh, show the passing of time or just like a little snapshot into Maddie's mind. Um, I just I really loved her writing. I also totally believed the rapid escalation for Maddie of having somebody be a stranger that lives outside and you see them through your window and then suddenly they are an integral part of your life and somebody you just cannot imagine living without. I also really loved Ollie. He is currently my contender for book boyfriend. Next up I have The Sword of Summer, which is the first book in the Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard series by Rick Riordan. At the beginning of this book we discover Magnus Chase, who is a 16-year-old homeless boy in New York City. Like Percy Jackson, this book is inspired by mythology, but instead of Greek or Roman gods, this one follows the Norse gods. If you loved the humor and adventure that Rick Riordan wrote in the Percy Jackson series, then you're definitely gonna like this book. I spent the entire novel with a smile on my face just needing to find out what's gonna happen next to Magnus Chase and his friends. If, like me, you've been putting off reading this book because you didn't think you'd like it as much as Rick Riordan's other books, I definitely think it's worth the read. Another book I really enjoyed this month was Wires and Nerve by Marissa Meyer with art by Doug Holgate. Uh, this is a new graphic novel series by Marissa Meyer which takes place after the events in the final book of the Lunar Chronicles which is called Winter. So if you haven't finished that series you'll want to do that before you pick this one up because there's definitely spoilers. The main character in this book is Aiko, the android, and it was so much fun to read kind of from her perspective of things but it flashes through all of the different characters and what they're up to. I read this book in one sitting and I had so much fun being back in this world with these wonderful characters. And if you're into this series, I definitely recommend picking this one up. The next book on my list is The Someday Suitcase by Corey Ann Hidu. This is the story of Clover and Danny, who are best, best friends who've lived next door to each other all of their lives. Clover is quiet and she's a list maker and 
uh, serious-minded science girl and her best friend Danny is loud and chatty and the one who plans all of their adventures. They are, as Clover learns in their science class, a symbiotic pair. So when Danny comes down with a mysterious illness out of nowhere, Clover takes it upon herself to solve the problem and cure her friend. I loved Clover's character. At 11 years old, she is a fixer. She carries the responsibility of this friendship on her shoulders, um, along with her family life and school life. I just wanted to wrap her up in my arms and give her a hug and tell her that everything was going to be okay. I also really enjoyed the unexpected twist of magical realism that Cory and Hidu weaved into this. Um, it was definitely a tearjerker and I would definitely recommend this if you like realistic middle grade fiction. This book comes out on June 27th. Next up I have The Scrivener's Bones, which is the second book in the Alcatraz vs. the Evil Librarian series by Brandon Sanderson. This series follows Alcatraz, who is a boy who discovers he's an oculator, which is someone who has magical abilities they can use by looking through lenses. All oculators also have talents, and Alcatraz's talent is he's very good at breaking things. This is just a super fun middle grade adventure that's so charming, witty, and funny, and loves to make fun of itself, and if you want a great book like that, definitely pick it up. Another book I read this month and absolutely adored was Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo. And I also read the sequel, Crooked Kingdom. Six of Crows is about six outcasts who live in a city called Ketterdam and they are hired to partake in an impossible heist. I was a little bit hesitant to pick this one up because I haven't read the Grisha trilogy yet, but once you get past the first couple of chapters and you allow yourself time to learn the terminology and kind of get into the world, it just takes off from there and I promise you, you'll immediately be hooked. So yeah, this is the first Lee Bardugo book I've ever read and I absolutely fell in love with her writing. Uh, but the best thing about this book is definitely the relationships between the six outcasts. Um, their friendship is total friendship goals and I loved every single character pretty much equally. I think Kaz might be my favorite, but just by a little bit. It was super suspenseful and definitely kept me on the edge of my seat all the way from beginning to end, and I just absolutely loved it. So if you've been thinking about picking it up and you haven't yet, I definitely recommend giving it a try. The next book on my list is Hot Dog Taste Test by Lisa Hannawald. I actually bought this book for myself last year, but didn't take a pro proper look at it until just this past weekend. Lisa Hannawald is the um, artist behind Bojack Horseman on Netflix, if you haven't watched that already. Uh, she has this crazy, bright watercolor world where animals are personified and it's just funny and kind of rude and beautiful all at the same time. I love her stuff. So this is technically classified as a graphic novel, but it's sort of just more of a collection of some of her works. It's not all one continuous story. Um, although scattered throughout the book, there are some longer pieces that she's actually written for magazines and things that talk about um, different experiences that she's had. I think my favorite one is when she went to a wildlife rescue place in California and got to swim with otters. It's a very funny story. If you are a comic fan and like weird, absurd stuff, I definitely recommend checking this out. So those are some of the awesome books that we enjoyed in the month of April. Let us know some books that you enjoyed in the comments down below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Happy reading and thanks for being awesome. Bye. <laughs>